Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. The first thing that we're going to do today is go down to the freeze dryer and pull out the bananas and the apples that I have in the freeze dryer that we put in there yesterday, I think it was. They are ready and this is the first time that we have tried any freeze dried fruit from the freeze dryer, which is really exciting. The only other thing that we have um, run through the freeze dryer is pureed squash which turned out awesome. It looked and tasted exactly the way that it did when it went into the freeze dryer when we reconstituted it. Um, so that was amazing, but this is the first time that we have done anything that we're gonna be able to snack on, and I am really looking forward to it, and my kids are really looking forward to it. Oh, I wanted to show you this. Okay, remember the other day when we started these pea shoots, and then in my last video, I think, I showed cutting off the ones on this side and putting them in a salad. And I forgot to tell you guys if, whether we liked it or not, and we totally liked it. They were absolutely delicious. But one of the things that the kids noticed, I think it was yesterday, about the ones that we had cut off is they're actually starting to grow again. And a couple of you had asked about that um, with the pea shoots. So with lots of sprouts that you're going to be, or microgreens that you're gonna be cutting off, you're actually cutting off all of the leaves when you cut them off. And when you do that to a plant, it doesn't have any way to photosynthesize and it ends up dying. But in this case, because there were little tiny leaves, I don't know if you can see that right down at the very bottom of the stems, those leaves are actually starting to grow again. So I've decided that this is going to be a little bit of a test to see if I can just regrow the sprouts without having to reseed this tray. These are starting to get kind of big, so we are going to need to get them used up within the next couple of days. But I'll let you know how it goes with regrowing these. I'll also go down to the grow room with you and show you the ones that we started where I didn't cover them with the soil and I just used the heavy tray on top and I'll show you how that worked out too. So let's go down and grab the stuff from the freeze dryer and give that a try. I'm so looking forward to that. So process complete, so I need to open the valve and that's over on the side here. Ooh, these are cold. Okay, so now it just says keep the drain valve open. And now it's going to defrost the inside all of the ice that formed on the inside will defrost and the water will come out the pipe and go into our pot that we have down here. Okay, let's bring them up and try them. Okay, so the first thing that I've noticed is that a couple of the um, bananas have this little foamy bit on the top and when I had mentioned in my last video that we picked really ripe bananas to do this with, um, someone said that they actually had exploded in their freeze dryer when they had tried doing that when there was lots of sugars inside of the um, banana. So I kind of wonder if that's why they formed those that little kind of foamy bit on the top. Not all of them are like that, just a few of them. And the apples look great. They're totally dry. So no moisture in those at all. So let's give the apples a try first. Oh, that's really good. It actually tastes very similarly to a dehydrated apple. The only difference is, is there's no chewiness to it at all. It's just really dry. You guys want to try one? So the only thing I'm not sure about is the skin. Tell me what you think. So unlike a dehydrated apple slice where the skin is a little bit kind of tough and chewy. This isn't like that at all. It's completely Ooh. kind of falls apart. You want one? Yes, it does feel like styrofoam. Um, someone mentioned in my last video that they found that the skins were really sharp in their mouths. So you guys have to tell me that too, whether you think. Like Tastes like baby food? It just like baby food. It doesn't taste sharp. Well, it doesn't taste sharp. No, it doesn't have sharpness. It's weird, but. Kind of a, like a weird texture. Yeah, but it tastes like a dehydrated apple. Yeah. It tastes like the, kind of like one of those crackers. It like melts in your mouth. Like a, yeah, it melts in your mouth, yeah. yeah. Like a baby cracker. Well, like a biscuit. Like a biscuit, yeah. Okay, let's try the banana. Mm, the banana's good. Mm-hmm. You know what's a bit weird about it? Is that when you first eat it, 
it just kind of falls apart in your mouth and then um, it tastes a bit like a dehydrated um, fruit. But as you chew it, it starts to reconstitute with your saliva. <laughs> Sounds kind of gross, but that's what's happening. And then it becomes the consistency of like a fresh banana. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? It's really good. Mm -hmm. Do you, so you guys like those better than the apples? I like the apples. Why don't you guys, do you want to eat a tray of these? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're a little bit stuck on the tray, so I could see why I didn't buy any of those silicone mats that go with it, but I could see that that would be advantageous. Here, you guys can gobble um, those up. It kind of tastes like a banana chip. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's similar to a banana chip, but it doesn't have, you like the apples? Here, you guys can eat the apples too. I'm gonna use my food saver, the vacuum sealer for mason jars and put these in a mason jar because I know these are going to be eaten right away. I'm just gonna run one of these down to Dan and see what he thinks. One sec, I'll be right back. Just wanted you to try these and tell me what you think. The kids love the bananas. They're yeah, they're light. You like it? It's like candy. Perfect. Yeah, very similar kind of flavor. I'm not a huge crazy banana fan, so I, I, I think they're okay, but it's not something I would personally snack on. But if you guys love them, then that's awesome because bananas are cheap. So we can do a whole bunch of these. Freeze-dried mango. Yeah. Oh, freeze-dried mango. I'll bet you that would be delicious. I have a couple of bags of frozen strawberries and raspberries. Do you want to try those next? Sure. I'll bet you those would be really good. Okay, we're gonna go for. This is, yep, we're going to go for some strawberries and some raspberries. I have a couple of bags of frozen ones in the freezer. Next, and try those. I've heard really good things about frozen strawberries, and I could imagine they would be really good. Hey. Okay, so you guys are gonna learn with me when it comes to this vacuum sealer for my food saver because I have never used one before, so I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. So I did buy one that has two different sizes. If I was going to do this for long term storage, I would definitely put a oxygen absorber in here. But since we're probably going to eat these up this week, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, I am lucky enough to have a good friend who is very well versed in everything, freeze drying, oxygen absorbers, mylar bags and all of that. So I am going to just send her a quick message and see if she can get back to me. Hopefully she'll get back to me right away about whether or not I have to put an oxygen absorber in here if we are going to be using this up within about a week. I know if we're going to be doing it for long term storage, we would want to do that. But because I'm going to be removing all the air out of it, and it's gonna be in a sealed jar. I'm hoping that I don't have to do that. So just give me one sec and we'll see what she says. I just sent a text to Allison as well. So hopefully she'll get back to me right away. So Allison has a really awesome preparedness account over on Instagram and she's just started up a YouTube channel as well. But she shares about all things preparedness applicable to everyone, but she also is a homesteader. So a lot of her preparedness information is um, is not focused on that but is applicable to homesteading preparedness as well and it is absolutely fantastic so i'll put that down in the show notes for you and for those of you that ask whenever i mention the show notes where you can find them so you'll be watching the video on your screen and then right below that there should be um, you should be able to see where i've written something like today we're going to be doing blah 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 and then if you click on that, it will drop down and it will show all the links that I mention in my videos. I try to put as much information into those show notes for you as possible. So that's where you can find them. Because I need to wait to hear back from Allison about the oxygen absorbers, I am going to put a lid on this and vacuum seal it. I'll just have to do it again if she tells me that I need to put an oxygen absorber in here. But the reason is, is that these will start absorbing moisture out of the air pretty much right away. And we wanna keep moisture out of this jar, of course, so that nothing goes bad or starts to mold. Uh, fortunately for us, we live in a really dry climate, so this isn't a huge concern, but I may as well get ahead of it, just in case. I'm supposed to leave a one inch headspace here, which I have not done. So we'll just take a couple of these out. I'm gonna to have to get a bunch more of this size jars. I have tons of gallon jars but I don't have a ton of half gallon jars and this is a really good size for these. 
Okay, I've also sent her a message on Instagram. So hopefully between all of those messages I've sent her, she's gonna be like, what's going on? Is it an emergency? Oh, she just has a question about oxygen absorbers. We have our canning lid, and this is a four jars canning lid, and you've probably seen these if you're on Instagram on any homesteading accounts on Instagram or on YouTube here, because these lids are all over the place, and there's a good reason for that. They are the best lids I have ever Use. So I've been using them for a couple months now and I wanted to give them a really fair shake before I shared them with you to make sure that they're as good as I've heard they are and they really are. I haven't had, I don't think I've had a single failure with these lids and the thing I like about them is they're quite a bit thicker than the other lids that I've been using for years and years and years. These lids are really, really good lids. So if you are looking for canning lids right now, I would highly recommend these four jars lids. So now let's figure out how to use this thing. Okay, so we've got our lid, put our lid on, make sure our rim is clean, which it is. Um, insert one end of the hose into the food saver appliance. This was my dad's food saver. It's probably, I'll bet you it's like 15, maybe even 20 years old and it still works great, but I have never used this um, part of it before, so hopefully it actually works. No, it just pulls off the lid when it comes off. There's definitely some suction happening, I just don't think this is, this is quite enough. Hmm, that's too bad. So I'm just going to put a lid on nice and tight here. And I'll wait to hear back from Allison whether I should throw an oxygen absorber in there, particularly now that it's not vacuum sealed. And then I guess I'm going to be buying a new vacuum sealer. The reality is, is this vacuum sealer has been on its way out for the last couple of years. I actually have to hold it down to get it to seal when I'm doing bags. So it was time for a new one anyway. What I am going to do now is get some strawberries into the freeze dryer. a fourth tray out in the freezer of some baked oatmeal, the baked oatmeal that I made the other day. There were a couple servings left. So like I said, I want to start putting together some packs of um, like emergency food for my adult kids that don't live at home anymore. So I'll throw that one in with these strawberries. That's fantastic, hun. Holy cow, that's really good. Well done. Oh, this one's not full. So these are canned peaches, so I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out. I am just going to fully go rogue here and just experiment with whatever strikes my fancy and we'll see what we end up with. I just don't want to waste any space and I will keep track for you guys. Um, how much power these things draw, the difference in our um, utility bill. Because I did have quite a few people asking me about that. You have to check and see if Harvest Right has lids for these. They probably do. So that I don't have to waste all this tin foil. All right, my friends, let's roast a chicken. I am going to use my Dutch oven, which I adore. I really need to buy some more Dutch ovens. Dan got me this one for Christmas last year. And I always get asked because it's an unusual shape. It's a Paderno and I love it so much. It was very beautiful when I got it, but now it is very well loved and not very well cleaned apparently. Okay, so we're going to make a lemon herb chicken today. We need some rosemary. We need salt and we need pepper. We need a couple of onions. Okay, thank you. Okay, he's done with the sawing now. So now I am going to chop up some garlic and I just realized that almost this entire meal will be coming from the farm. So we raised the chicken. The herbs were grown in my garden. Same with the onions and the garlic. So we have the salt and pepper that were not, and then the lemons that were not, but I'm going to change that. Well, I won't be able to grow lemons, but I will buy lemons 
bulk um, when they're on sale and then I will preserve them so that I don't have to be buying them, especially in the off season, like in the middle of winter when they are expensive. Okay, you know, my garlic cloves are so humongous that I think I'll just do one of them. And I need to grab my onion chopping eye goggles. So I have tried a bunch of the tricks that have been suggested to me over the last couple of months of ways to have onions not burn your eyes. So I've tried the damp tea towel on or paper towel around where you're cutting. I've tried lighting a match. I've tried, what other things have I tried? Running them underwater. I've tried keeping them in the fridge. And um, the only thing that actually works for me, and I really think it's just because I'm super sensitive to onions, is the swim goggles. It's gonna be my tried and true method that I use to keep my eyes from burning. These were sent to me by my friend Rachel from that 1870s homestead. She sent me two. These ones are my favorite, but the other ones are pretty awesome too. These ones are just so stylish and they coordinate with my kitchen, which she didn't actually intend, <laughs> intend to do. She didn't do that on purpose, but they coordinated anyway. So we're going to put some of these onions inside the chicken along with some of the garlic and some of it we're going to put underneath the chicken. This makes the gravy really good, but it also keeps the chicken off the bottom of the pan. Okay, slice up some of this lemon. And then slice up a few slices of lemon to go underneath the chicken. Okay, we're also going to put some of our sage and our rosemary inside of the chicken. And then I'm going to put my chicken inside of my pan like so. So I'm just going to loosen the skin and I'm gonna shove a little bit of sage in underneath the skin. Okay, so now I'm going to take some butter and put it in underneath the skin. And then liberally salt it all over. Pepper. You could roast this without the lid on it, but because my chicken's a little frozen, I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna roast that at 275 for a couple hours and then I'll turn it up to 350 to brown it up and I'll take the lid off towards the end of the roasting and I think I'm going to make some herbed potatoes to go with it for dinner tonight. Oh hey, I'll show you where we're at with our sprouts. I forgot to rinse them a couple of times so they're taking a little bit longer than they normally would but you can see they're starting to grow in there. So I like mine so they have quite a bit of green on them. So I let, usually let them go for about seven days. So because I forgot to water it and kind of give it a rinse off and shake it a little bit, you can see all the roots are growing along this one side. So I've decided that I'm not going to shake it. So I've just been rinsing it really gently because I wanna see if I can get these to kind of grow up like they do in the store where you have all of the roots on the bottom and then the plant material on the top and see if that works. I want to take you down to the grow room and show you the tray of the peas that I planted the other day where I didn't cover them with soil just, to, just so you can kind of get a visual for what that looks like. But the other thing that I think I need to do right now is clean off the ledge in my kitchen and my window sills and wash my kitchen windows. One of the things that, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but when I edit videos, I become really acutely aware 
of all of the different things that I don't notice when I'm just working in my kitchen every day. Like if my cupboards are really dirty or I have drips or my stove just doesn't look really clean or anything like that, I just become really aware of it. And the last time when I edited last night or the night before, I noticed how completely cluttered my ledge has gotten. So I'm gonna clean that off too. But before we do that, let's go downstairs and I'll show you the sprouts. Okay, we're still waiting for our hooks to come for hanging up all the lights. I'll show you where our plants are at right now. So this is our little baby lettuces and look at all the little baby tomatoes. So I'm gonna have to divide these out, pick the strong ones and get them potted up pretty soon. And then these are the radishes and the germination wasn't fantastic with these radishes and I haven't yet filled the empty cells with anything yet. This was just a fun experiment to see if I could actually get radishes in here. And then this is another tray of lettuce that I just seeded, I don't know, three days ago or so. So here are all of the pea shoots. So what I did was I put some soil in, I laid all the seeds on top, watered it really well, and then I put a tray on the top of it. And I left that there until all the seeds started to germinate and roots went down. I pulled that off and then put them under the lights and they are growing awesome. So this is just a way to be able to use a little bit less soil. So worked really well though. So these are our new humidity. So this one is a temperature gauge. This one is a humidity. So you can see the humidity is really low. When I came in here, it was 35. And then we left the door open while Dan and I were talking and it dropped down to 23. So optimally, this should be between 50 and 60. So obviously a humidity issue in here. Once I have this all filled, with trays i don't think it's going to be an issue but i'm going to have to put a humidifier in here for when i'm just doing a few trays at a time if it starts to become a problem with the plants themselves this isn't all installed totally properly yet we've just kind of been playing around with it but this one the humidity one is hooked up to this fan up here that will turn on if the humidity gets too high in here but like i said before i don't think that's going to be ish an issue because it's so dry where we live and we are not running a heater in here right now and it is 31 degrees celsius which is really warm um, not a bad temperature for germinating heat lovers like the tomatoes but pretty warm for the plants that like cooler temperatures like the lettuces this is just with the heat of the lights. I don't have any other heater running in here. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to play around with kind of getting the um, climate in this grow room to be absolutely ideal. We have done a lot of research into how to do this all properly, but there's nobody that has the exact same setup as us. So for instance, a wood stove right outside of our grow room. Um, living in a really dry climate the way we do, et cetera, et cetera. So we really do need to play around with this to get it fine-tuned for our particular setup. And that's gonna probably take a little bit of time. So my son just came up with a great idea. We are going to make chicken melts for lunch today. And this is another one of those recipes that I'm needing to come up with measurements for, so the timing could not be better. And we're going to be able to make them with some delicious sourdough bread. I feel like my sourdough is getting better, but it's definitely not where I want it to be. And one of you reminded me of something that I had completely forgotten, and that is that it's not recommended. <laughs> Trying to film with renovations happening in the house is, thank you, is uh, challenging. <laughs> what was I saying? I was talking about right. Oh, right. Um, one of you had pointed out that it's not recommended to use metal when you are doing sourdough, not for any bread making, but especially not for sourdough. And that is because it is, metal is antibacterial and you're dealing with bacteria, of course, when you are making sourdough. So I am going to get myself some glass bowls and I think that that is going to make a huge difference, or I hope it's gonna make a huge difference with my sourdough. I'm still happy with my sourdough, it's just not um, exactly what I am going for. But it will make some delicious sandwiches for lunch day. What time is it anyway? I'll wait and cut the bread because it's actually only just after 11 right now. But I will make the chicken the yummy chicken part. So we need garlic, we need onion. Okay, we're gonna need our 
onion chopping goggles again because I'm going to chop up a red onion. I am also putting in some zucchini relish and when I am making zucchini relish again this coming up summer, I'll show you how I make it. It is my favorite. There's tons of recipes online though. And speaking of zucchini, this is one of the zucchinis that I harvested. When would I have done this? Probably the beginning of September somewhere. And it's been sitting down in my storage room and I wanted to cut it up. I said I would do this the other day and I forgot um, with you guys and see what's happening on the inside and if this is still usable. This is the longest I have ever stored zucchini. Zucchini is not a winter storage squash. It's a summer squash that is generally eaten fresh. So let's see, let's take out those seeds. Yeah, there's like a ton of, there's still a ton of moisture in this. There is no reason that I could not use that. That's fantastic. And this is stored without anything special, just in a cool place, a cool dry place. I am really impressed with that. So we are gonna use that. What do you guys wanna make with this? Zucchini chocolate zucchini chip bread. Muffins. Oh, zucchini chocolate chip muffins or zucchini yeah. bread? Zucchini chocolate chip muffins. Okay, sounds good. So that's something else we'll do, I guess, today is make some zucchini chocolate chip muffins with this zucchini. All right, red onion. You can use a white onion too, but I like red onions better when it comes to putting them in sandwiches or salad or anything like that. Onion, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, more or less depending on your preferences. A couple shakes of pepper, again, same thing. Three tablespoons of relish, in this case, zucchini relish. And a cup of mayonnaise. Going to add a cup of grated cheese. You can add the cheese on the top when you're going to broil it if you want, or you can mix it in like I'm doing. If I am going to keep making sourdough and it's just gonna be something that I do all the time, which normally I don't, normally I'll go for a couple months and then I just kind of stop and just go back to making normal yeast bread again. But if I do, because we're all really enjoying it, then I think I'm gonna buy one of those electric knives. So much easier to cut sourdough with one of those. I'm happy with the air bubbles in this one. I just think that it's so cool that you can make bread with just flour, salt, and water, and the natural yeast from the air. It's amazing. Decided to add another half a cup of mayonnaise to this because it wasn't quite as creamy as I was wanting. There, that's better. Yeah, we're gonna add some pea shoots and some sprouts to these, or at least for those that want, I do, definitely. Add a little sprinkle of cheese to the top, and then we will bake these in the oven until they're nice and golden. A couple of you asked what these taste like. They, they taste kind of like a pea flavored spinach is the best way I could describe it. Okay, so that's what they look like when they're all done. So we have our alfalfa, whoops, those aren't alfalfa sprouts, these are the pea shoots. And these are the alfalfa sprouts on this side. This is how I'm going to eat mine. So I actually, I'm gonna cut that in half. So it's easier to eat. And then I am going to top it with some of these pea shoots. And then I'll just use a fork and a knife to eat that. Does not look tasty. We are going to stop for our lunch break now, but we'll catch up with you soon. <laughs> Bye guys. We're now back at it and we're going to make some chocolate chip zucchini muffins. So we have some zucchini grated there. I'm so impressed that we're using a zucchini that is just about five months old. That's awesome. A 
One, two, three. Hey. Yeah. Okay, we are going to bring our fruit down and pop it into the freeze dryer because it's all done defrosting now. We're getting sheep in about two weeks, Romney sheep. They're a combination wool and meat breed. One of my neighbors spins. And when we were talking about sheep, she said Romney wool was wonderful wool for spinning. So we have decided to go with them and I found a really wonderful breeder. So we'll bring you guys with us when we go down to her farm to pick them up. But I'm really excited too. And they're all bred, so we're getting five. And they're bred, so we're gonna have babies in April. Well, these may have spread kind of weird, let me show you on the top, but the flavor is delicious on these. They're pretty good. You said you didn't want one, honey? No thanks? Okay. I think that is where we will end today's video, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.